Hello everyone and welcome back to Life Transformation UK or if you are here for the first time, welcome to Life Transformation UK. My name is Ben and it is my mission with this channel to help you achieve your freedom through confidence. And in this video today, I want to talk to you about how to set fair boundaries for yourself and why that is so important for your general emotional health and also when it comes to building your self-esteem as well. So if you're excited to know more about how you can set fair boundaries for yourself, then make sure that you watch this video all the way through. If you enjoy the video, make sure to smash the like button down below because it really helps with the YouTube algorithm and it really helps to let me know if I am doing a good job or not, if this is the kind of content that you would like to see in the future. So first things first, having fair boundaries for yourself is absolutely essential to your emotional health and also to building your self-esteem as well. Because if you have higher levels of emotional health, it means that you have a good relationship with yourself, with your own emotions. And that is massively helpful for when it comes to building up your self-esteem and making sure that you have fair boundaries when it comes to your friends, when it comes to your family, your workplace and other people in your life is hugely, hugely helpful in that area. After all, at a certain point, we do have to take time away for ourselves to do the things that we need to do to go after our goals and oftentimes to just spend time taking care of ourselves. Now, one of the things that you 100% need to know before we go any further into this video is that setting boundaries for yourself is in no way selfish. Because there are times in life when you do actually have to spend time thinking about yourself first. And if you keep putting other people ahead of you in every single area of your life, you're not going to have any time for you. You're not going to have any time to pursue your own goals. No matter how noble it sounds to put others before yourself, sometimes you do just have to spend some time looking after yourself, caring for your own emotional health and going after the things that you actually want to achieve in life. At the end of the day, your emotional health is just as important as anyone else's. And it took me a very long time to learn this, as you'll probably find is a bit of a theme with uh, with a lot of my YouTube videos. It took me a lot of time to learn most of the things that I know now. And it's one of the reasons why I share this stuff is so that you can go through this process a lot quicker than I did. So I used to have this friend who is going to go unnamed out of respect for the person as privacy and we had some very very clear boundary issues the friendship was very much about this person and about their needs and because i thought that it was the good and moral thing to do would be to to put that person's needs ahead of mine all the time i made a massive effort to making sure that i was always there no matter what that if something came up I dropped everything to go and help this friend and and be there with them and it turns out this person was pretty much just uh, like, kind of like an emotional vampire or they were there just to get as much attention as possible and it often left me really really drained and eventually it left me in, in quite a bad place emotionally because I would need to go and do some coursework or I would need to go and catch up on some other work related to either my job or my work at university and I would throw it all aside just so that I could make sure that I was there for this person knowing full well that this person was not reciprocating back to me because when I had my own needs, when I had my own problems, that person was gone and it was it was just me that had to deal with them. And I really put my heart and soul into this friendship, into this very one-way friendship and it was 100% not worth it in the end. I haven't spoken to this particular friend in probably about three years now at a certain point they just had to be cut off and I had to find a way to set better boundaries in my friendships and throughout the rest of my life as well. So for the remainder of this video I want to share with you five simple things that you can start doing today to start setting fairer boundaries 
in your life. And the first thing is probably the most important step of all, and that is to start saying no to people. It's so easy to get caught in this loop of saying yes to every single thing that comes up. A person asks you to help them move house and you say yes, even though you have your own things that you need to do this weekend. Or somebody comes and asks you to walk their dog because they have to go out drinking with their friends and you say yes you'll do that because you want to be a good friend and there's there's so much that goes into it saying yes all the time because we're taught that it's the polite thing to do and for me growing up in a, in a very religious family I was taught that it was the moral thing to do was to help people as much as I possibly can and it was only when I started to get older and more mature that I have begun to realise that this is potentially not a great attitude to hold. So it's important to start saying no to people and it can be difficult to just go all in and just say no to everything and focus all on yourself, which is kind of the extreme end of it anyway. But my recommendation is to start small. Start by saying no to small things. It might be your roommate asking you to do the dishes and you've done your dishes and you just say that you can't right now. Remember that when it comes to saying no, don't give excuses if you just can't do something or sometimes if you just don't want to do something, just say no. But starting small with very, very simple things like that will show you that it is okay to say no to people. And here's the thing, if somebody does get angry and in your face about saying no to these really, really small things or as they start to grow progressively larger, then it's gonna tell you a lot about what you need to know about that person and we'll touch on this topic a little bit later on in the video. So start saying no, start small, say no to very, very small things and slowly start building up. And another thing that you can do which could possibly help is if it is something that you do want to actually help out with, you can do it, but you just can't do it right now, rearranging things is absolutely okay. So let's say a friend wants you to come out and meet them for drinks at six o'clock and you still have a lot of work left to do, say no, but I can meet maybe at seven or I can meet at eight and try and work out and negotiate something that is better for you. Because that way you still end up being able to help the person and possibly actually going out and having a lot of fun, whilst at the same time exercising fair boundaries for yourself. So moving on to tip number two, after you've started saying no to other people, the next step is to start saying yes to yourself. It's so important that we don't structure our lives around other people, around what they want us to do, and that when we are setting our goals, when we're determining our values and what we want to believe in life and what we want to do with our lives, that we make sure that it is primarily coming from us. I spent a lot of time working towards goals that weren't mine, that I thought were things that I needed to achieve, and it never made me happy. When I went to university, I went and studied law, not because I was particularly interested in it, but because I knew it would make my father happy because there wasn't anybody in the family that had gone into a field such as law or medicine or engineering or anything like that and I wanted to make him happy so I went into doing law and it was only after the first year that I realised this is 100% not for me, it's making me miserable and I switched and I did a psychology degree instead and a part of that was, was setting a new boundary which was that I'm only going to pursue a career and a future that I want, not one that will necessarily make my parents happy or proud of me now. As it turns out, my parents are very happy and proud with, with, with me for what I'm doing with my life now, uh, which I'm obviously very, very happy about as well. But make sure that you are saying yes to yourself, that you're making decisions for you and that you are structuring your life in the way that you want it rather than in the way that other people want it. Okay, tip number three is stop apologizing when it's not your fault. This is a trap that's really, really easy to fall into because we want to make things right. We want to make other people feel better. So it can become so easy to latch on to guilt and blame and bring it onto ourselves as if things that are happening are entirely our fault. 
Now, this isn't to say that you should never apologize for anything because 100% sometimes we do need to apologize. Sometimes accidents happen and that is okay. But let's say, for example, you have to, let's go, go back to the example I was using earlier, you are doing some coursework for your university degree and somebody asks you to go out for a drink with them and you say, I can't do it because, you know, I have all this coursework to do. It, it's so easy to say, oh, I'm really sorry, you know, I, I, I feel like I've let you down. And when in reality, you're actually not doing anything wrong. And if you're not doing anything wrong, then you shouldn't be apologizing. And this can be a really, really difficult habit to break out of, I know, because I used to apologize for everything. I remember going back, even, even when I was very, very young, one of my earliest memories of, of, of me just saying sorry for things that actually had absolutely nothing to do with me was we were all sat down for a family dinner. My older brother knocked over the uh, the, the bottle of orange juice and I apologised because I said, oh, it's clearly my fault because I was the person that had it before and I hadn't put the cap back on it when in reality nobody put the cap back on the orange juice it was just being passed around so that we could pour ourselves a drink but I I apologize for that because I didn't want anyone to feel bad I wanted that to to sit with me so that I could kind of make myself a, a martyr in that way and it was it was not a very great way of thinking and it was a way of thinking that actually stuck with me for many many years but coming back to the central point is that if something's not your fault and if you've done nothing wrong then you don't have to apologize and it is something that you are just gonna have to start practicing doing and you're not going to feel so guilty about setting boundaries for yourself Tip number four is to take time and space when you need it, because sometimes you do just need to take a break. Sometimes you need to go take a couple of days of holiday just to spend it on your own. Sometimes you just need a few minutes of alone time to take a walk and clear your mind. So when you need to take some time and space for yourself, make sure that you are doing that. It might be a little bit inconvenient for another person in that time, but you know that by taking this time and space for yourself, you will be better equipped to go back and address the problems and the events that are arising. So never be afraid to take a break, take some time for yourself, and then go back into whatever the problem is with a fresh mind and a fresh perspective. And then the final thing, Step number five is make sure that you are eliminating toxic people in your life. Now, going back to this friend that I spoke about in the early part of this video, eventually I just had to break off communication with that person because they were tearing my life to pieces. Everything was a, a massive drama and I felt like it was my job to fix all these situations and it got to a point where I was actually almost physically hurt because I went to try and, and protect this friend from something that I had no business and no no right to to get involved with at all but I thought that it was kind of like my my moral duty as as a good friend to go out and do that and I almost got myself hurt so it's very very important that when you do have toxic people in your life that you either try and reduce the amount of contact that you have with them or you get as far away from them as possible if it is somebody that is at work then maybe it is that you can't get away from them just yet but you can start to plan maybe on moving on to a different job or a different department, or if you can't get away from them at all, reducing as much contact as you can. But ideally, you'll want to get as far away from toxic people in your life as possible. It is important for me to say that toxic people are not necessarily people that might provide you with honest criticism because I fell into that trap myself thinking that anybody that has anything negative to say about me that they're a toxic person I should cut them out it's very important to take negative feedback and criticism sometimes because it can help you to become a better person but if there is somebody who is breaching your boundaries and bringing your life down then that person is maybe it's time for them to leave your life entirely. And when it comes to actually setting what your boundaries are, always remember what are the things that you value? What are the things that you are working towards in life? What are the things that are most important to you in life? And if somebody is asking you to step outside of those areas for a non-legitimate reason, then maybe it is time to say no to that person and say, yes to yourself instead. 
So I hope you have found this video useful. If you have done, make sure to leave a like on the video because it really helps with the channel growth and the video reach. And it also lets me know whether or not I'm doing a good job with creating these videos. So a like would be massively appreciated. If you have any questions or any comments, make sure to leave that in the comments section down below and I will do my best to reply to every single comment that is left. If you're new to the channel, make sure that you are subscribed so you can get more content like this on a regular basis. I post three videos a week, Monday for self-esteem, Wednesday for self-confidence, and then Friday for more general self-improvement. So if you're interested in any of those topics at all, make sure that you subscribe and turn the notification bell on so that you can be notified as soon as a new video comes out. But otherwise, thank you very much for making it all the way to the end of the video, and I look forward to seeing you in future videos very soon.